非常开心，比得到诺贝尔奖还开心，<笑>因为我永远得不到诺贝尔奖，而我今天得到了纽曼奖。我我的得奖感呃获奖感言的题目叫做“相逢厄克拉哈马”，这是我第一次飞往厄克拉哈马，经过半个地球的路程，来接受纽曼华语文学奖。这个奖项所极赏的代表作是写于二十四年前的长篇小说《既是于虚构》。据我了解，这部小说并没有翻译成英语或者其他外国语种，于是。越过距离、时间、语言，我和他又一次相逢在纽曼文学奖，而这些歌离于邂逅，又正是这部小说，既是于虚构所试图给予描写的。我从我在浩瀚时空里站位的一个点，辐射出去，尽可能抵达更深更远。用文字，我们的方块字，仿佛一种图案型的密码，扩张一个大我的世界。这项工作从开始起就决定他徒劳的命运。时间是无形的，空间也是无形，文字呢有形，一个一个却是谜语。中国自古传说，先祖仓颉造字，鬼夜哭，天语数，意味什么？我猜想意味着天地透露给人类一点机要，这一点机要像是精灵，闪烁不定。你往东，他在西。你往西，他又在南，又像禅语，不能说，不能说，一说就是错。如此这般，无形加有形，再加错误，就是小说既是于虚构。We're going to be going paragraph at a time, section at a time. The title of this acceptance speech is "Coming to Oklahoma." This is my first visit to Oklahoma, a journey half around, halfway around the globe on the occasion of my acceptance of the Newman Prize for Chinese Literature. I wrote the novel for which this prize is being awarded, Reality and Fiction, some 24 years ago. To the best of my knowledge, it hasn't been translated into English or any other language, and yet here I am, encountering it once again after crossing physical, temporal, and linguistic distances. In fact, it is precisely such separations and chance meetings that I was trying to describe when I wrote *Reality and Fiction*. Radiating out from that tiny spot that I occupy in the vastness of time, I hoped I might arrive at something even more profound, ultimately reaching a world of the I writ large. And all by way of the written word, in this case, Chinese characters. Which are like square diagrammatic ciphers. Still, from the moment of its inception, this novel was fated to be a labor in vain. Time is formless and space is formless. But what about the written word? Chinese characters have shape; they are discrete units, and yet at the same time they are also riddles. The ancient Chinese legend tells us that when Changjie created the written word, spirits cried in the night. And the heavens rained millet, but what was the significance of all that? My guess is that it meant that heaven and earth had revealed a secret to humankind. This secret was something magical, like a will o' the wisp. If you go east, it will be in the west. If you head west, it will be in the south. Like Chan Buddhism, it can't be expressed in words. Anything you say will be wrong. Thus, if you take the mistake that is language. And add to it the formless entities of time and space. The result you'll get is the novel, reality, and fiction. 感谢评委，尤其感谢推荐人，将这部早已遗落在视野之外的荒谬之作打捞出来。至少让我自己觉得，二十多年前做了一件对的事情。不仅是我，还是小说。虽然错中错，但留下一个错误，也算是提供一个线索。去向虚空茫然追寻我的存在。回想写作的当时，还很年轻，心力和体力都有一股子野蛮劲。倘若是现在，也许就会升威，然后放弃。这活计，这活计不好做。用虚空的家伙，在虚空的大块里，挖掘一条虚空的隧道。我去的那个暑天，早上开工，中午打尖。
提的饭盒走到户外去买午饭。太阳当头，蝉鸣鼓噪，眼前闪着晶亮的树叶上的反光，恍如白日梦中。折返户内，吃完午饭，坐到书桌前，空白的稿纸上中断的横切面里，再一次进入，就觉得回到现实。傍晚时分，西去的光线柔和下来。现实和梦境的边缘不再那么尖锐，软化成类似液体的性质，滑润、透明、焦躁，富有弹性。写作也使人疲劳，并且劳作也使人疲劳，并且妥协。于是，衔接处变得模糊、暧昧、合二而一。这样的交融状态，在下一日的黎明时刻再有分裂，断口坚硬，甚至比上上一日更加陡峭，跋涉则更加艰苦。I'm grateful to this panel of judges, with a special nod to the ones who nominated me, for rescuing this absurd composition of mine from the obscurity into which it had fallen. At the very least, you've shown me that two decades ago I did something right. It's not just me, but also this novel that is a comedy of errors. And yet there is another error that may offer a clue in the search of the existence for, for the existence of an I in the vastness of the void. Thinking back to the time when I wrote this book, I recognized that I was still quite young, ambitious in both body and spirit. Were I to set out to write this book today, I might well find it too daunting and would have to abandon it. The task is an especially difficult one, for it requires one to use an imaginary implement to dig an imaginary passage in an imaginary landscape. I remember how that summer I would start work in the morning and break at midday, heading out with a food box to buy some lunch. The high sun beat down on my head. Cicadas clamored raucously, and the light reflected off the leaves with crystalline intensity, like a daydream. I would go back inside, eat my lunch, and sit down at my desk in front of a blank sheet of paper upon which lay a partially completed paragraph. I would begin again, and as I re-entered the work, I felt myself returning to reality. At dusk, with the rays of westering light in gentle retreat. The line between reality and dreams became blurred and softened, taking on a fluid quality, luminous, translucent, insoluble, and flexible. My labors left me feeling exhausted and equivocal, and the intersection between fact and fiction became fuzzy and ambiguous, so that the two merged into one. This blended state would be shattered early the next morning, but each day this got harder and more wrenching than the day before, and the trudge became ever more arduous. 事实上，它代表了所有的写作，只是在它由于内容的关系，就称为显学。倘若是一个具象的写实的故事，进来和出去会比较顺利，因为笔下的世界和真实经历的生活有着统一的表象。而既是与虚构断然不同，它将存在分割成两部分，互相混淆、互相难难辨。因此，每一部分自有存在的理由。实体性的生活如此具体。感官的清历源源不断补充储备，更新经验；纸笔间的虚拟世界，则不，则不时面临枯竭、危机重重。他们建立在形而上，要求着更为严严苛的逻辑。向哪里索取呢？山穷水尽时候，我去到图书馆，捧来一堆固执。严格的图书管理员检查我的随身物品，不允许有阴染和污损自自己的携带。比如墨水笔、茶水罐、湿手巾，这只这使人产生幻觉，似乎眼前的书籍其实有仙缘，稍不留意就会触动魔咒，消遁的无影无踪。一方面我更加确信其中就有我要的，另一方面又击退我的信心，因为我要不到那个我企图结构起来的形而上的存在，见才相当可疑，仿佛莫须有，但我一定要它有。并且以为要他有他就有，因为我需要。In truth, this could describe any and all writing, but because of its content, this novel is in a league of its own. Had it been a work of realism, something more concrete, stepping in and out of it would have been smoother, because the world emerging from my pen and life as I actually experienced it would have been in alignment. But reality and fiction is sui generis. 
It divides existence into two parts, mutually obscuring and mutually indistinguishable, because each part has its own raison d'etre. Our, corpor our corporeal existence is very concrete, and our store of sensory experiences is constantly being replenished. But in the world I was inventing with pen and paper, I would find from time to time that the well was running dry, and there were multiple crises. The metaphysical realm demanded even stricter logic, but where could I go to find it? When I'd exhausted all other avenues, I would go to the library with a big stack of paper. The stern library guard would search my things, because you weren't allowed to bring in anything that could leave a stain or mark on paper, including pens, containers of hot tea, or damp handkerchiefs. This led me to imagine that the books in front of me were enchanted, and that even a moment's inattention could bring a curse down on my head, and they would vanish without a trace. On one hand, I was quite certain that there was something there that I wanted, and on the other hand, it defied credulity, because I couldn't have had it even if I'd wanted it. When it comes to that met metaphysical existence, one that I was attempting to build out of highly dubious materials, it's as if it wasn't entirely there, and yet I wanted it to be. What's more, if I wanted it to be, then it would be, simply because I needed it. <coughs> 它的张狂在于竟然无视知觉的局限说没有就没有This compulsion had an unbridled and undisciplined quality because it was not constrained by empirical facts. I wanted nothing more than to transcend the senses and know the world that lies beyond them. In other words, I took I, myself, as a point of departure and traveled to a time and place where I was absent. There I built a paradise for that absence of self, creating limitlessness out of limitation. Unlike Paleolithic humans, I didn't have any physical tools in my hands. But I did wield a product of advanced civilization, the written word. In that respect, I consider myself indigenous to the age of civilization. When it comes to words, if you say something is there, then it's there. And if you say it's not, it's not. Written language is also enchanted in a way. The moment you utter the spell, poof, it's gone. However, behind all of my willfulness and drive lay a vague sense of doubt doubt about the existence of that I, and questions about where I came from and where I was going. Whenever I looked up, wherever I looked, up, down, left or right, I was nowhere to be found. I was falling into decline, or more precisely, was floating, weightless, anxious to find a patch of ground to rest on. How then could I rescue myself? How could I give birth to I out of the midst of the absence of I? <laughs> 在看继续于虚构紧不住有些胆寒放到现在我顾不得误解的危险使用过多的增材食料有历史的亦有个人的无我自宗
，时时处处提醒我是谁。越知道我是谁，就越知道无我的不可能。但这样的自知，并不使人气馁，而是相反，更加向往。在我的边界，仰望无边无际的无我，真是深邃。你的目光将弦将接壤处推远，推远，推到无限。Going back and rereading reality and fiction, I couldn't help feeling some trepidation. Today, I might not write this quixotic book, or if I did, I would definitely use a more elliptical approach. I wouldn't try so explicitly to create a world. I'll tell you a secret. My early working title for this book was Genesis. You can see how cocky I was. Fortunately, it didn't end up with that title. Otherwise, I would have been punished for blasphemy. Because it had to be convincing both to myself and to others, I didn't give any thought to the possibility of misunderstandings and used too much factual material, both historical and personal. Consequently, the book has often been viewed as a family history and autobiography, one that also happened to coincide with the literary trend of multi-generational family sagas. Nowadays, I no longer feel such antipathy towards being part of that trend. Consciously or unconsciously, we're always nudged along by such currents, and they're a good thing. Moving us along with the stream, or else propelling us forward against it. These forces push you out under the road, and once you're on your way, you can go anywhere. Thinking of this book as an autobiography isn't such a bad idea after all. Where I is absent, only I has form, and from that form, one can move towards the metaphysical. Age and experience have taught me that everywhere I go, I am always being reminded of who I am. And the more I understand who I am, the more I realize the impossibility of my absence. Contrary to what one might think, this sort of self-knowledge doesn't discourage me. Rather, it makes me even more hopeful. Standing in the liminal space that I occupy and looking out at the immeasurable vastness of the space where I am absent is truly profound. And my gaze pushes that boundary farther and farther out, and into boundlessness. 谢谢大家，谢谢每一个人，你们对我太好了。<笑><笑>对，谢谢。<笑><笑>